Hello there and welcome to day seven of the Great Guitar Build Off Unofficial Challenge. My entry to it. Now then, in day six, um, I finished the video having put the neck in the jig, but I didn't route the end uh, because it's an important join with, joint with the body. So I'm going to do that first. I've got my templates ready to route the control cavities in the back of the body. I've got the router. I've got some um, fretboard radiusing blocks, which I've made myself, and I'll show you how I did those. So I think I've probably got enough to be going on with. So let's get going. I've had a bit of a change of plan. I was going to go straight in with the router on this joint, but I've decided I'm going to take a bit of material off first with this saw. A saw that I only get out for special occasions. Um, I'm only just going to take a, I don't know, about five mil off, a, a section of five mil off, off the top there, just um, shy of the line that I've got to route to. My reason for cutting this piece off the end of the neck is that these sort of dovetail router bits don't take off much material at the top and so I'd rather have a less material to take off at the top than the bottom and I think by doing it that way I'm going to get a better finish. Anyway, let's try it and see. Okay, let's see what we've got. That doesn't look too bad. I think that's a jig that's going to need to be redesigned. But uh, anyway, let's see what happens. See if we can get this in. It's a little bit wide. Going to need to take a little bit off the sides of this neck, but only a little bit, not much. The good news is I've got a light above my sanding station now, so uh, I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit off this uh, side of the neck. Let's see what happens now. That's a really nice tight fit. But I need to take some off the bottom so that this fretboard sits lower on the body but otherwise that's all right. I also need to shape the end of the neck round these corners so that they go into the rounded parts there but otherwise uh, that's looking really good. Now this is a part of the build that always needs a bit of work to get it right. Um, at the moment I think the neck is sitting too high above the body um, and I've also I think I've got a slope away now in a way that doesn't matter I'm not quite sure why I have got it sloping down away from the body um, and if I was gluing a neck in I would have a little slope in it anyway but I think that's too much I've either got to route out the neck pocket a little bit more or do something with the neck and I think I've got to route out the neck pocket. So, yep, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I've routed another millimeter off this neck pocket. And I've also routed uh, another millimeter off the end of this neck. I didn't uh, show it on camera, so only so much video you can take of a router bit spinning. So the uh, important thing is, will this fit? So let's try it again. Right. Well, we, we're getting there. We're getting there. Not quite there. <laughs> Not quite there yet, but we're getting there. I really am very close with this neck, so I just need to shave a little bit off this plate here so I'm just gonna 
and I really am talking sort of a fraction of a millimeter okay I've taken all the pencil marks off it's pretty close I could uh, shave a little bit more off the the back of the neck but I think I'm going to leave it for now um, and then once I've shaped the neck I might have to just do a bit more tidying up okay well it's the end of the day now um, I didn't start till later so I'm going to uh, come back to this in the morning right well I'm happy with the neck joint as it stands at the moment I might have to do a little bit more fiddling with it but I'm going to get on with shaping the neck first thing I'm going to do is radius it then I'm going to shape the back of the neck. Now, it's going to take a while and I think I need some music. As you can probably hear, it's going to get a bit noisy today because the builders outside are doing quite a bit of drilling with a pneumatic drill. But I've got my Sunburst Travel guitar, which I finished a couple of weeks ago, and I've got an idea for a riff, which I think will be great to go over the neck shaping portion of the video. So I'm going to record something. Got it plugged into the iPad. Just need my headphones on. Let's get going. Okay, I'm happy with the radius. I've done it 16 inches, which I know is rather flat. Um, most people would do it 12 or 10, but I sort of feel because this has got an acoustic element to it with a piezo pickup, that it's, um, it's nicer to have a flatter fretboard. Anyway, uh, also it doesn't take so much sanding. So now we've got to shape the back. There's still a lot of shaping to do, but this is coming together and starting to look like a guitar. I've had enough of sanding today, so I'm gonna have a break. See you tomorrow. But what I thought I'd just quickly show you how I make my radiusing blocks. Now, this is one of them. Basically, I've got a strip of sandpaper, a strip of 60 grit, piece of ply, piece of hardboard, something that's not too thick that will bend and a couple of offcuts of wood. This is taken from the end of a bit of MDF I think. So basically I just glue and screw those there. Also have a bit of um, foam, this is from packing. Um, and I'll just cut that just to fit in between. Just find that this helps a bit support the wood there that goes on the top there that glues there and that's essentially it but I'll show you how you get the radius Okay, 
so I've got a rough radius there and what I can do now is just loosen those screws off to adjust it to the radius that I need. I'm using 16 for my guitar. That's pretty good. Now all I need to do is stick the sandpaper on the top. When you're sticking sandpaper on these levelling beams, to be perfectly honest with you, you only need the masking tape on one side. And there we have it. A radiusing beam set at 16 inches. Done. Okay, off camera I've done some more shaping of the back of the neck using um, this Shinto file and a serve form. I'm not entirely happy with the neck yet. I want to do a bit more work on it but I want to put the binding on before I do anything else and uh, before I put the binding on I just need to cut the fret slots a bit deeper now that I've radiused it. I've also um, sanded the the top and the back of the body um, just with about a 60 grit on the uh, the sander so just to take off any glue that was on there. I've also just taken the edge off a little bit just to chamfer it down I just just like a, a nice little edge there um, so the next thing to do is to cut the fret slots a bit deeper then put the binding on this little neck vice is a handy little tool it's just made out of scraps of wood uh, some bolts and bits of aluminium and it just enables me to hold the neck secure I'm just going to take these frets down to three mil once the binding's on I can't get in there with the fret saw to do that so uh, this is the time to do it here we go I had a fight with the drill bit last night which didn't help just finish off the other end Okay, so now I'm going to tackle the binding. Now I'm using some strips of Santos rosewood, which I cut from a fretboard and then sanded down on the uh, the belt sander. I do like to have a binding on the edge, just to, so you don't see the ends of the frets. And the decision I've got to make is how am I going to glue this on? In the past, I've used super glue and managed to glue my fingers together. Um, it's worked, uh, but I'm just wondering whether wood glue would be better, easier to clean off the neck. I'd be interested to hear what uh, you do for gluing wooden binding on. I think I'm going to go with wood glue. I'm just going to run this little tool across the edge of the fretboard here. So it's just a bit of 60 grit mounted on this block of wood. And I can just put it on the fretboard and just run it up and down just to clean off any glue any odd bits of rubbish that's stuck on the side there I really pull that tape tight so there's a sort of downward pressure and sideways pressure to pull it in. I think using glue is one of the most fascinating parts of woodwork because you know, the glue bond is very often stronger than the wood itself and it's it's incredible when you put things together like this uh, to undo it all and have a really solid piece of well musical instrument or furniture or whatever you're making okay now I need to get on with routing out the rest of the body here we go I've routed out the top now I need to route out the bottom but I need some registration marks to make sure I route out the right bit now to do that I need to run some center lines across these screw holes and round to the back of the body 
So I'm just going to mark it very lightly with a pencil. These are the two templates for the back of the body for the main pickup cavities. So this one is routed out first and this routed out afterwards to give me a recess to be able to put the plate on. So that's the neck, that's the bridge. Just a question now of lining this up with the centre line. It's sort of disappeared now I've sanded it so I just need to mark that again. Okay so line up the crosshairs. This will just help me put it back in the right place. Okay, that's that marked out. Now I need to know how deep to go. Okay, so on this guitar, um, the pickup at the moment is sitting five mil above the surface of the body. I'm gonna route this through, leaving eight mil on the top. Right, let's get set up for that. Okay, so if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know my technique for routing. First, take out some material with a Forstner bit, stick the template on, and then route it out. So I'm gonna do that, but I'll do it off camera this time. I think you've probably seen enough of me routing. Something that I have found really useful when you're routing a big cavity like this one is gonna be, is to have a, an extended base or a, right, a router sled on the bottom just uh, it's just a piece of wood attached on there with a couple of bolts and it just means that when you're moving right across sort of that side the router base is not going to fall down into the recess there i've routed out the cavity at the back of the pickups now i'm going to route out the rebate just to put the cover on and i'm actually going to use some of this aluminium which i'll probably spray black uh, and this aluminium is a millimetre thick, so I only need a rebate of about one and a half mil. I'm pleased with the way that this has come out, so now I need to do the control cavity down there, and for that I need to take it out, because I've got to work out where the thing is actually got to be positioned. All I need to do is get my template out, which has got the position of the control pulse. There's nothing particularly scientific about lining up this cavity it's just a question of making sure that everything fits now then these are the two templates that I've got one is for the recess one is for the actual cavity itself so that's the top okay so I've made myself a cardboard template which um, is the size of the plate that's going to go on the top but I've also marked out the interior as well. So now I can just double check. Volume, selector. It's gonna give me some problems that, so I need to move that over. When I drill this hole, I'm gonna come this way. Should be able to get away with that. That's that, that's there. And then the stereo socket should squeeze in just there. It's always very tight doing this. Okay, so that's the control cavity uh, routed out and the plate recess routed as well. It's really close between these two panels. Um, I think I'm gonna to have to redesign this in the future. I've also got some super glue on there, which is a bit of a nuisance. I'm finding it's leaking through this uh, masking tape, obviously bought cheap stuff. Anyway, I'm going to see, I'm going to try an experiment now to see if I can indent the top surface of this for the uh, controls. Now I fully accept that this may be a daft idea, but I fancied having recesses in the front of the body where all the controls were, rather like a PRS. So what I've actually done, I've stuck some 60 grit uh, sandpaper on the top of this roofing bolt and I'm hoping that if I put that in a drill that I can use that to create that sort of nice dip. Here I've got an off cut of the olive top and I've got my new tool mounted in the, the pillar drill here so let's see what happens. Well if you want to start a fire that's probably a good way of doing it but that's not really going to do the job. 
my idea to create PRS style uh, recesses there to hide the, the bottom of the knobs didn't work so I've just gone for a false a bit the same size as the the knobs I'm using so I should be able to put that in there and that hides the nut and also it, it thins the wood a little bit so I can get the uh, spindle through from the the control on the other side I think actually that's going to look quite smart okay next job Let's have a look, see what this neck looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to have to trim down this binding on the top and I'll do that probably with a plane to start off with and then I'll just sand it. First of all, I'm just going to cut these ends off. Okay. Left them a bit of proud, I'm going to trim that off once I've sanded it all down. The time has come to tackle the neck attachment. Now that's going to be via this single roofing bolt with this inset going into the neck. Now, according to my measurements, I have to go 45 mil back from the, uh, the routing line there. So I'm going to mark that there. So that, according to my calculations, is the position. Well, this is where we find out if the truss rod's in the right place. This is a multi-stage process. First stage, I'm going to drill a pilot hole through the body. And that will act as the locating position. And get that right. Let's go... Stage two, using a 20 mil Forster bit, I'm going to create a little recess so that the roofing bolt sits inside the body. Stage three, drill an 8.5 mil hole through the body. Okay, stage four, with the neck in position, I'm going to keep the 8.5 mil drill in. I'm just going to go through and I just want to touch the neck just so I know where to drill the hole. Okay, so the last stage is to drill a 10.5 mil hole. Um, and I've set the depth stop at 14 mil. Now I've got that centered out there. There, hole. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. Right, okay, so I've got the hole. Now I need to put this insert in. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to screw it in to try and get it in as straight as I possibly can. Then I'll just loosen it a bit, put some glue in, probably some wood glue, and then screw it down again. Just so it makes sure it's held in tightly. So this is the fiddly bit. Just got to make sure that that goes in as straight as possible. That's looking reasonably good. He says, going in at an angle slightly. So let's just see if we can adjust that. Trying to get as flush as I can, although I'm going to actually just do a little rebate there, in there, so that should be okay. So th that looks pretty good. I'm just going to loosen it off a bit, put some glue just on the side, and then let it go back in again. Probably a bit overkill, but there you are. To be honest with you, that's pretty flush. Um, it's obviously going to be sanded down a bit when I sand this neck, um, do the final sanding. So I might not need to do anything with the body, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, that's in place. There's a couple of reasons why I use these roofing bolts. Firstly, they're dead easy to get hold of. 
uh, they're just eight mil roofing bolts and secondly you can do it up with a coin so if you're on your travels and you haven't got a screwdriver all you need is a coin and there we have it guitar Sanded the fretboard down to uh, 320 and it's looking really nice. Now I wasn't going to but I think I'm going to put a bit of binding on the end just to finish it off and I've left a, a little tang on each side. So I think I'm going to glue that up and leave that overnight to set. I was a bit worried because the binding that I had was too thin but I found this piece of veneer which obviously I've cut from something and that will do the job just fine so I'm going to stick that on the end and then I'll do some final shaping okay I think I'm going to finish this video now because uh, I've got a lot done I need to leave this to cure overnight this bit of binding on the edge but I've got the fretboard nicely radius I've got it bound and sanded to 320. I need to sand the back and do a bit more shaping just on the headstock there just to tidy it up. Um, I've routed out all the important bits on the body. I've just soaked some super glue on these inserts here just to strengthen the wood there. Um, I've got to obviously drill out the, the hole for the jack socket and I want to shape the back a little bit more it's a bit harsh at the moment so I'm going to shape that um, but I think that's all for the next video thank you once again for watching and if you like this sort of content please hit subscribe and don't forget this is for a charity so please head along to the great guitar build off 2020 uh, website to see more details anyway I'll see you soon thanks very much for watching <laughs>